Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at the knives I carried on Halloween, some new QSPs, and the 10 best knives to get stranded with. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my favorite comment from this past week, uh, there were two of them, uh, but they were both on the Brighton Blades uh, interview. First was, my daughter loves Brighton Blades, says Jeremy Nedro. I love hearing that. And then Jason Scott said, that's really nice to see a family working together to make knives focused on women. Fun interview, Bob. And a lot of other people mentioned uh, how they like seeing, you know, a mother-daughter team. Uh, it's a it's a mother-daughter's team. It's a great thing to see. And um, I like it too. And incidentally, they sent uh, my wife a little, uh, a knife. A, uh, a It a, comes in a little zipper case and she loves it. And she says that the knife itself is uh, really easy for her smaller hands to open. So she really appreciates the knife and I appreciate them. That's Brighton Blades. Check out the, uh, the interview with them. Uh, all that being said, I think it is now time for a pocket check. You know, I've been in my Bowie phase, and uh, I've been carrying this knife a lot. This is an old favorite. Uh, this is from uh, 2013. I bought this. Uh, this is the CQC 13 by, um, you know, Ernest Emerson and Emerson Knives. Uh, they're not their very first Bowie, but the first one that they became famous for um, far and wide. I think the first one they did was a take on the... Um, Kalashnikov bayonet that has a clip point, uh, but this is a full, full bred American Bowie knife. I love the shape of this blade. And uh, when I got this, they were very hard to find. And um, like most Emerson's, they come in and out, you know, they, they tool up the shop for the production of one kind of knife, so to speak. And then uh, they move on. Um, so you can't always get, uh, it's not like a constant stream of these, but when I was looking for them, one in 2013, I remember really feeling like I was compromising getting it with the uh, serrations because it interrupts the line. Now, this this blade has a really, really nice shape. And I must admit, those uh, those teeth do interrupt uh, the the shape a little bit. But I've I've learned to live with it. A and B, um, you know, these chisel edge blades are ridiculously sharp. And then you add those serrations. And that's actually a portion of the blade that is just. Um, you know, a force to be reckoned with. So I'm glad in the long run that I have it. I'm veering back towards serrations for a number of different kinds of knives and this sort of application all around her, but definitely on the self-defense side, uh, those work great. Now you might notice these are wearing uh, micarta scales. These are from Vantage Point. That's Tom Englund, uh, Engelson. Uh, he was on uh, the show and he's done a couple of my Emersons. He does such great work. He used to be a uh, blades and such. Uh, you remember I talked about him quite a bit when I was having these scales made. Uh, his work has progressed amazingly, and uh, he just makes beautiful work. Um, so happy always to be carrying the CQC 13, but especially uh, on a uh, in in Bowie season for me. Okay, speaking of Bowies and clip points uh, today, and for like I don't know, I guess I'd say the last week, I've been carrying the Benny's clip. Love the Benny's clip. Uh, this is Jack Wolf Knives' uh, uh, largest knife. I guess there's an, uh, well, I can't remember which other one. I was kind of lining them up. And there's another one that is about the same length. But this one feels the feels the heaviest. It feels like it's the heaviest duty. It's a Benny's clip. And I think part of that is because this is the one blade from Jack Wolf Knives so far that isn't a full height hollow grind. So you have a little bit more meat uh, up here in the flats, and it gives the knife a little heavier duty feel. This knife uh, was in my pocket uh, when my wife was running the Marine Corps Marathon. Uh, I want to congratulate Mrs. Knife Junkie on her first and last, she says, marathon, and it was the right one. It was the Marine Corps Marathon. She's always wanted to run that. Uh, so 
We went out for a celebratory meal. She got this amazing looking steak. I got a half chicken trying to be responsible, you know, the old ticker. Um, but this is what I took that chicken apart with. And this is such a great food knife. I love this knife for, I've used it for steak in the past. Um, I really uh, enjoy the shape of it. That slight recurve at the tip really aids in the cutting and it's just a luxurious feel. And I also love spotting the waiters spotting the knives like hmm, he's not using that wet handled saw i handed him this is a classy individual they always say to themselves uh so that's what i had in my uh, front left pocket today uh the jack wolf knives uh i've also been care uh benny's clip i've also been carrying this actually uh a bit the past week this is the cjrb scoria uh this was the folder i had in my pocket because i wasn't sure uh, if there was going to be any metal detectors and um, you know, come to think of it, this makes no sense to me. Now I wasn't making sense because I had the Jack Wolf knife, uh, in my pocket and that's, mm, uh, so actually didn't really think that one through, but <laughs> I had the Scoria on me as, as sort of a less expensive option that I could go trucking around with. <laughs> Sometimes I can be quite absent-minded, uh, dear audience. Uh, so anyway, a CJRB Scoria, great knife. Um, thin nice and thin it's got that beautiful micarta uh a ar pm9 uh a polarizing design but i really i don't know why i think it's just a very plain and kind of simple and beautiful uh design i love the the blade shape and the choil uh so great knife this fits great in the back pocket as well but it's a full-size knife so i had that that was my esk emotional support knife. And my fixed blade today was actually uh, one that uh, I'm going to show here instead of the state of the collection. This is a new one sent to me by QSP. They sent me three knives. And uh, thank you, David. They are they are awesome knives. And I'm, I, I've been carrying two of them and using a third. Uh, but here here's the uh, neck knife. It's called the Canary. And um, this one has this uh, cool sort of carbon fiber-esque uh, Kydex sheath, very nice sheath, very thin and light package is this canary. Um, and it's got a really nice ball chain with, with, uh, it sort of looks like Morse code, uh, to me, but it's got the ball chain and then a longer, uh, piece and then a ball chain and a longer piece. And actually when you're wearing it, it kind of looks like a necklace, uh, less, less like a beaded chain that has a knife on it and more like a, Oh, Bob, I didn't know you were a necklace guy. Well, you haven't known me for that long, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but um, so here, let me show you the knife. I'm, I'm really impressed with this beautiful little knife. So it's got Damasteel, a Damasteel blade. This is my first. Here, let me get it to focus. There you go. Beautiful. And then that carbon fiber is aluminum carbon fiber. How cool is that? So that, that means that's aluminum uh, swirled in there with that carbon fiber. And the handle is nice and light, nice and thin. Those four speed holes are great. This is a three finger knife. And I say those speed holes are great because uh, you can weave a fob, you know, weave some paracord through there uh, in such a way that it's kind of a braided, braided effect. And then when it meets down at the bottom, uh, tie a knot and it'll feel like it'll give you the stability of a four finger knife. I'm not going to do that. I like the uh thinness of this package also look at the jimping the jimping is very cool on the um spine it is a spiral cut jimping uh, let's see if we can and uh at first it had a very funny feel to me uh but your your thumb really does lock in and at first i thought oh my thumb's gonna just go sliding off the side and it doesn't happen uh but just feels great in hand. I love this little canary. So I've been wearing this uh, past few days as my neck knife. I had it today. Not as my neck knife, but as my fixed blade. And it just so happens to be a neck knife. So my carry today, the Emerson CQC 13, Jack Wolf Knives, Benny's Clip, the CJRB Scoria, and uh, the beautiful Damasteel Canary with the aluminum foil um, carbon fiber handles. <clears throat> what were you carrying today? Uh, let me know. I do want to know uh, because it always helps me kind of figure out uh, if I want to get something or uh, reminds me about knives I've forgotten about uh, that you all love and carry. So uh, let me know down below. Um, I also, uh, before we move on, it's sort of a, a, a 
a carry thing. I want to I want to show you what I was carrying for Halloween. Okay, so we went to some friend's house. They moved into a new neighborhood. And, um, you know, me being me and not knowing the neighborhood, uh, I, I dressed, uh, I, I, I did overkill, you know, I, I don't, I don't wear, I didn't have a costume, uh, but I did have a few knives and, uh, I really did consider what I was going to carry. Um, I don't know where this is. It, it ends up, it was a, it's, it's a very nice neighborhood. So all of this was pretty much unnecessary. Uh, but I don't know, you know, you never know. Halloween does bring out the, the creeps. So uh, I had a couple of knives, three of them. Uh, I'll start with the small one. I had the Launch 9. This is my, uh, pull this out and use it on those really uh, uh, stubborn, like taffy packages. Uh, most, of the, most of the Halloween candy is, is built to get into pretty easily. But those things that are like Laffy Taffy, where the, where the candy actually sticks to the wrapper and all that, sometimes... You need a little bit more. And uh, sometimes you don't want to pull out your big carry to open up a kid's candy. So you bring out something cool like this. And um, this one got a lot of nice wear uh, because it lived on my keychain for for about, I don't know, half a year, year, something like that. Uh, but really gave this futuristic looking knife. Now it looks like an old worn in spaceship to me. Uh, but I had this along with me and did use it for just that uh, banana Laffy Taffy. Uh, in my front right pocket for uh, for creeps and criminals, I have the uh, Yojimbo Yojumbo to just a nice big four inch S30V hollow ground Warncliffe blade built for speed and conflict. And I love this knife, but it's also, uh, you know, despite all of that macho talk, it is a great utility knife, uh, albeit large. A lot of people don't like large knives. Uh, if you do, this is a great, great utility knife. Um, and if you don't like something four inches, well then go for the Yojimbo because it has the same uh, uh, breeding. It is a defensive blade by breeding, but it just so happens that that shape is ideal for utility as well. So what is it? Which do you call it? To me, it's like a modern day pocket sax. And that's what I was carrying on Halloween in my front right pocket. Now, here's where the overkill comes in. Um, I ended up uh, stashing it back in my car after feeling uncomfortable. Uh, but I was carrying my uh, uh, Topps Zabo Express double edge fighter here. And I had it in CM carry. And if you're if you remember CMFTW, uh, Matt Freeman on uh, YouTube, uh, knife maker, and uh, character, uh, he used to carry his uh, seven inch, seven and a half inch fixed blade fighters that he would carry on his person. Uh, in California, it, you can't carry it concealed, so it had to be shown off. So he would carry it on his belt and it would dangle below his uh, his jacket line. So you could see the handle of his blade. And that's how I was carrying this in CM carry so that you can draw it out and have it in reverse grip or you can just reach. Uh, and reverse your your orientation and pull it out and have it um, in regular uh, 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 fencing grip. What do you call this? Saber grip. Um, and that's how this is what I carry when I walk the dog at night. And that's how I carry it. Uh, heaven forbid I ever need it uh, because a dog off a leash or something like that. Uh, I would have it ready to go, but it's discreet enough in the dark at night in my neighborhood that no one sees it. But in this beautiful, charming sort of Spielberg-esque neighborhood that we were trick-or-treating in, uh, I really quickly felt uncomfortable because I, I could feel this peeking below. And there are all these little kids, and I'm like, you know how sometimes children uh, randomly reach up for hands and grab onto something? And, and so you look down, and there's some kid holding onto you, and you're like, oh, I think that's your dad over there. Um, well, what if they reach up and they grab a, the Zabo Express and suddenly there's a kid running around like, oh, sweet. You know, then you're in real trouble. So uh, all these things ran through my mind and I uh, uh, realized I was not uh, I was not trick or treating on the moors, you know, where the werewolves run. So I I I, I quickly disarmed uh, to the extent that I came out and uh, and a wonderful evening was had by all. I, I did pill for the girls uh, bags for Butterfingers and uh, Reese's. And I think they've changed the recipes for both or I'm just getting old. All right, so still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're gonna take a look at a couple of new knives. One of them is a giant mouse, very beautiful looking fixed blade. And then after that, we'll get to the state of the collection and the 10 best knives 
to get stranded with. Coming up right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Uh, Voxnez and Anzo, they come together. They have Giant Mouse, a very cool knife company um, uh, by the two Danish designers, the storied Danish designers. Everyone loves their designs, uh, myself included. Well, when they come together, man, they really they really put out some cool stuff. Uh, Giant Mouse, I love the name even, and their logo. Um, they have a new one out, and it is a beautiful do-all clip point uh, kind of camp blade. Um, this is the largest Giant Mouse thus far, and uh, you know, naturally the, uh, the largest um, fixed blade they have here. Uh, it's a five and a half inch blade, or 5.65 inches, and about the same size handle. Um, just a beautiful full flat ground clip point, uh, N690 blade. Uh, they do have all of their knives OEM'd, I believe all of their knives OEM'd in Italy. So, uh, you're going to get the N690 most of the time. And I think on a few, they do M390, um, for some of the more premium stuff, but look at that blade. I, and if you're not looking, it is, it's, it's the height of simplicity, but it's just, really resonating with my with my bowie love they call it a drop point and i beg to differ that is clearly a clip point uh but has a couple of hallmarks of outdoor knives that i really like and i think most knives should have um and that is a um, a lashing point not only for the lanyard at the um, pommel and this has a uh, exposed tang down there so you can use it as an impact tool but it also has a lashing point on the uh finger guard so you can make that sort of uh, D ring between the um, uh, out of paracord between those two lashing points to keep on your hand for long bouts of work. If you're using a knife a lot and you don't want to keep putting it down, putting it in a sheath or whatever, uh, but you need your hands. Uh, I, I have seen now I haven't had the need for this because uh, I'm not much of an outdoorsman, but I have seen people have the knife attached to their hand uh, just with the paracord so they can use their fingers and do, you know, manipulate. And then when they need the knife, it's already in their palm. Um, that's something I think is cool. Also, uh, the, um, the, the predator Arnold Schwarzenegger side of me also likes that you could remove those handle scales and use those two lashing points to make it a spear, uh, you know, for survival, but beautiful, beautiful leather sheath. I, I wish we would all, not all, but I wish a lot of knives would go back to leather, uh, unless, for me, unless I'm wearing it on my person uh, in the waistband, um, you know, give me leather. If I'm going to hang it on my belt, I want leather. I just love leather. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the new one from Giant Mouse. I, I I like it a lot. The GM9. Oh, wait, what is this called? Uh, what is this called? Jeez, I do apologize. Uh, it, it's a big one. The GMF4. Uh, okay, so uh, on to the next one. We have... Uh, in uh, Life Knife News, it's the James brand. Now, you know I like to talk about them because they approach knives from a different angle. I I believe um, they come from a, a product design background that uh, uh, went into shoes, I believe Nike, and also some fashion, I believe. Uh, so, so their approach is interesting, and they have a lot of uh, really stylish knives that they've had uh, OEM'd by some of the top uh, manufacturers this new one the palmer uh kind of cutely named because it fits in the palm it is a replaceable blade uh utility cutter uh we've seen a lot of people uh a lot of custom makers uh, todd rexford and uh, uh the uh g and g hawk uh, grant and gavin hawk and uh, just recently and many others uh, come out with their versions of replaceable blade cutters and there is a real uh you know, real market for them. Just go to Home Depot. You'll see yeah, tons of them. Now, of course, you're probably not going to want to get a $60 James brand Palmer and show up to the construction site. Uh, but who knows? Maybe you uh, maybe you do a lot of packing of packages. 
Uh, maybe you do a lot of work, uh, you know, at a framers or in a warehouse or something where you're not uh, where you're not going to destroy it, but you're going to love using because you use this kind of thing all the time. Uh, I, I myself never quite the most excited I've gotten about one of these kind of cutters is the Grant and Gavin Hawk one that recently came out because it's just, you know, it's them and it's their design and it's it, it really resonates. It's spectacular. Uh, this is actually for the type a very cool, cute, charming little piece of kit. Um, so uh, they come in a, a wide range of colors. I was looking at it on their on their website. And, you know, for a brand that makes a $600 knife that they OEM, 60 bucks is pretty reasonable for uh, an anodized uh, aluminum uh, cutter with this uh, sort of intricate innards. So uh, check that out from the James brand. That is the cleverly named Palmer, a new stylish replaceable blade utility cutter. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get to the state of the collection and the 10 best knives to get stranded with. Uh, but first, if you think what we do here is interesting and fun and you want to learn a knife, uh, learn a knife, and you want to win a knife or have the chance to win a knife every third Thursday, of the month uh just come right here uh, to patreon the knife junkie.com slash patreon check out the three levels of support that we offer currently you can also just uh, get it all done in one fell swoop and save 12 percent if you pay annually and we've had a number of pe uh, people take advantage of that um recently anyway uh check us out there uh and if not um thank you one and all just for watching and and uh enjoying and commenting and uh we'll see you on the other side the Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. There it is. You know it. It's the QSP Penguin. And this is the original version that got the whole large collectible universe of QSP Penguin started. Um, this is the one with the denim micarta. I do believe this was the first one. Um, look at that. Look around the clip. You can see how pristine it is under there and how funky it is here. I love that. I love my car to patina. And uh, this is a uh, this is a great knife. That's why it's got that patina. Most of my my car doesn't look like that. This is a dedicated desk knife. It's always getting picked up and used. Well, uh, David Cam, who uh, uh, our good buddy over at Orion Knives uh, has an in with QSP. And he sent me a, a, a couple of these QSPs to check out new QSPs. And I am grateful. Now, I showed you. Uh, the uh, Canary, which I really enjoy, have enjoyed wearing. Uh, but he also sent me to check out two penguins uh, that are so cool. The first one is the Penny, uh, the Penguin Mini uh, by QSP. Look at this little guy. It's uh, it's in line with some of my favorite little micro knives here. Here, here it is with the uh, the Launch 9. You see, and it and it's about the same size as the baby rhino from Off Grid Knives, uh, but it, you're taking the same form factor from the from the regular QSP, the same width, the same almost the same dimensions, uh, same pivot, same everything basically, just shorter blade, shorter handle, uh, but all of this is the same, and it works great, and that is the key. I've, I'm starting to discover that is the key with these little micro knives is keep them the same width as the original. Um, but, you know, so so it'll be easier, much easier to hold on to a three-finger knife when you have that width. And they did that here, and I love this little thing. Um, it just, man, it feels really good, and um, it's on bearings, so eventually it will, um, it will get super smooth. And even I suspect, even with this tiny little blade, it'll still fall shut. How tiny, you ask? That is a one, two, two and a quarter inch blade. Two and a quarter inch. How cute. 
Uh, this is a uh, 14C28N blade steel. I do like that the only, um, uh, not the only, but I do like that they have the proprietary pivot, the triangle and the circle. It reminds me of something I can't think of what it is. Like, it's either like, funny enough, Alcoholics Anonymous symbol or the uh, Harry Potter symbol. I can't remember, but there's like a triangle circle thing. Every time I look at that, I keep thinking I got to go look it up so I don't talk out of school. So the other penguin they sent was the Penguin Plus. And this is so cool. I highly recommend going to the QSP website, actually, and looking at all of the variations of both of these. Uh, this is a 20 CV blade, and that's a longer blade here. Uh, you have one to three and a half inches now on the website it says 3.37 inches but i keep coming out i keep measuring it out at three and a half and you have at least that in cutting edge because of where that sharpening notch is so really great blade it's the same uh same feels like the same dimensions as the uh and same geometry as the original and in a titanium body now, these two titanium slabs are nice and thin, so it doesn't need any um, weight relief. Uh, you get stupendous action. It's it's already, you know, even with that coating, it's already getting drop shut. So I have no doubt that after uh, a little bit more carry and use, uh, it'll be it'll be just dropping shut. But anyway, as I was mentioning, um, both of these knives have a tremendous amount of variation if you go on the website and just beautiful stuff. I do remember seeing some fat carbon and some swirly, colorful uh, options. Um, me, for me, this is like right up my alley. This uh, this black coated uh, stuff uh, stuff. This black coated titanium. I, I just got lazy at the end of that sentence. Uh, so uh, you got a, a, a frame lock here with the insert, but I want to point out that this wire clip is stout and really nice. I generally eh, I'm not crazy about the wire clips but this wire clip is really good actually i've i've noticed recently that that uh, people are making some pretty good ones this one is to my liking definitely uh qsp nicely done so those uh those are two uh two of the three qsps uh that i uh, got to check out this week thank you very much uh, i really like it i like the clip on this uh mini I, i'm sorry this is the yeah the penguin mini I like that clip uh, better. Uh, though those screws are standing proud. Little tone deaf, guys. Just kidding. Um, but I love this. Uh, I love this clip. This is kind of more of my speed. Uh, at last in the state of the collection. Now, you you saw this uh, if you tuned into Thursday Night Knives. Um, but this beauty I've been waiting for for a number of years. And uh, it is the traditional Filipino weapons Taliban. And uh, funny name, uh, it's not named after the, the terrorist organization. It is a, an old traditional Filipino blade uh, design. There's one over my shoulders right here. That used to be my dad's. Here, this one right here. Um, I have always really loved the, uh, the leaning forward, that, that uh, almost kukri-esque uh, blade angle there. Just, just a wicked, wicked cutter. And I love traditional Filipino weapons. It is a company uh, based out of uh, Connecticut, Ron Kazakowski. He's a uh, gentleman who's got a Jeet Kune Do and Kali Academy where he teaches people how to fight uh, in these Filipino uh, styles uh, as well as Jeet Kune Do. But uh, he has a connection down in the Philippines and uh, has these uh, a whole bunch of different uh, blades made by traditional smiths down there and uh, sells them up here. And they're just beautiful, beautiful woodwork, beautiful steel work, very, very usable. I'm just going to put this hilt under here so you can see the, uh, see that beautiful woodwork. Uh, they brag about how they're combat ready. Uh, so if you're going into any sword fights, you'll be happy to know that these are combat ready, um, which of course, that's exactly what I want to hear uh, just because but um, they feel great, and I, I can vouch for the fact that they cut water bottles and, and pumpkins uh, like they are the enemy. So I wanted to show this off. Uh, there will be more of this uh, in videos of me testing it and uh, 
we have a couple of uh, jack-o'-lanterns that are about to get funky and we have a couple of pumpkins that uh, we need to clear out for thanksgiving so uh i think i'll be doing that with my traditional filipino weapons taliban love that knife uh, i would not mind having that knife on me for many many situations um especially uh you know duels in combat but what about the other kind of situations you might find yourself in uh like uh you accept a ride with a friend and you're out in the middle of nowhere and the car breaks down and your friend has a heart attack or breaks a leg or something and you're stranded and you have a knife on you what do you what are you going to want on you now this list is a very difficult list for me to compile with the collection i have because i have a i like it's like you could say any knife that's on you of course any knife that's on you is better than no knife at all and then you could also say well um you know some very impractical knives are better to have on you than others and that's true but chances are you're not going to have those knives on you now the caveat here is i keep a nine and a half inch bowie in my car uh, that is a shrade and it is an inexpensive but after a couple of videos uh, I, I bought it as a car bowie and i said bob don't be ridiculous and then i've seen a couple of videos recently of of things happening on the road and i said no you know what i bought that for my car it's going in the car um so there it is um so it is possible to have a stout and sturdy fixed blade uh, on you for this sort of situation so i added some into this list uh roughly half so uh let's let's get to it all right first is a a real low-hanging fruit that's what this was designed for exactly what this was designed for this is the rsk mark iii by doug ritter and uh made by hogue now doug ritter yeah he's the guy who does knife rights he's the guy who started and heads up knife rights and has had the laws changed in so many st states including my own making this legal here um but you might not know this about him uh, if you haven't listened to any of my interviews with him, but he uh, was a helicopter pilot and specialized in um, downed helicopter survival and started making kits or downed aircraft survival or just survival out in the wilderness remote. Because when you're in a helicopter or an airplane and you go down, you're probably remote. Um, and that's where the design for all of his knives originated. Great steels, uh, you know, super steels on great cutting geometry uh, blades um, using uh, modest handle and other materials so that it's all affordable. So uh, that's what led to this. He's made other fixed blades. This is his current, and uh, it echoes the design of his uh, Mark I, the, the, uh, the quote-unquote Ritter grip that we all love so much, now made by Hogue the rsk mark one okay so here it is this is s45 vn and it's got a very tall that's an inch and a quarter flat grind so very robust but very thin behind the edge it is small and uh, small at about five inches in blade length uh but but large enough to get a lot of work done at five inches uh you have a good posture for defensive fighting if you had to if you needed this in a thrust you have a finger guard and a nice well, and you have a wide blade that would produce a, a nasty wound. Uh, say you're out there and you're concerned about uh, an animal of some sort menacing you, coyotes, or I don't know. I don't know what it is, uh, but you could use this to great effect, especially if you remove these scales. These scales are removable. Uh, you might have to have the tool with you. So that's, a, uh, that's something you might want to have with you, but you could turn this into a spear quite easily and you wouldn't have to to take those off but uh ergonomics that feel great you could use this all day long to make a shelter um this is just a you know it's a great great package uh both i, I think this would probably be a good soldier knife too except for the fact that uh, i hear that a lot of uh soldier knives go missing so you might not want something so nice uh s45vn I have uh, I have appreciated this. This is my only S45 VN, but I've used this quite a bit in the back. And I ordinarily hate nylon sheaths. This one is awesome. It's got a very stout uh, lining on the inside, so it's not going to poke through your poke through the sheath and stab you in the leg if you're jumping around. Uh, it's got a uh, nice uh, leg thing here, uh, leg uh, 
tie down. Uh, and then it has these great sort of Molly compatible loops that make it easy just to unsnap and put it on your belt without having to uh, take your belt off and all that. So great, great blade, and it's nice and light. Okay, next up. Um, now, this is sort of a representative of the type, uh, but this one in particular is, is the Max, and that's the 4Max Scout. That was corny. Uh, but the reason when I say uh, an example of the type, of course, I'm talking about that triad lock. So we know that uh, Cold Steel just makes incredibly tough, sharp, robust knives and uh this one this is the formax scout based on a uh andrew demko custom knife um and then later uh turned into a high-end expensive foreign produced um or a european and uh taiwanese produced formax uh and then they decided to go with the, the scout route and make it inexpensive that's aus 10a and man, they, they do a great job with OS 8. They do an even better job with OS 10 because it's a better steel on their budget side. They even have great 8CR13 MOV. I do know from my uh, Luzon XL that I've just beaten over the years because, uh, you know, it's the, the, expen the inexpensive knives that, quote unquote, can't take it, that get the most beating. And they really do prove themselves. Um, but anyway, uh, this knife, so thick, so robust. And with the... Uh, with the um, triad lock, just it, it'll do until a fixed blade gets here. I mean, this this thing is as strong as you're going to need it to be. A uh, pretty thick blade, uh, but with that uh, saber grind and then a pretty high um, edge bevel, it comes to a very nice sharp cutting edge. Um, so the four max scout would be an awesome one to be um, stranded with. This one was a gift to me by uh, Jimmy Slash. Uh, thank you, Josh. I cherish this knife. Actually, I put this uh, this fob on uh, in his honor because uh, all of his or many of his knives have have that on there. So here's to you. All right. Next up in the same uh, same realm and from the same designer. But a little more bougie version. We're going to go with the Demco knives 80 20.5. So this is the knife you have on you when you get stranded, when you're driving in the middle of nowhere in your friend's car and you're like, man, I knew we shouldn't have gone. And and, and uh, something happens uh, to him or her. Uh, you get out to use the bathroom. A leg is broken. Uh, the car won't start. This is the knife you have on you. You're going to be happy about that for many reasons. It is a full size knife. So that's a, a 3.65 inch blade. And you've got very good width here. This is a little bit over half an inch thick and just feels great. Those ergonomics are awesome. And they give you some options. You can be back here in the in the regular standard grip. Uh, you can do the hammer grip. That, that shark lock we all know uh, has no effect on any of your grips, which is amazing. I remember when this first came out, I thought... Uh, yeah, that looks like it might uh, be uncomfortable. But even if you come up and use that choil and you use like a very, very firm hammer grip, I, it just, I don't know. I don't feel it. It disappears in there. Um, so you have a very robust blade stock and a pretty stout geometry here. Uh, very sharp, very, very sharp, uh, but not a shrinking violet. This is a uh, very, very strong knife. And then you have really great texture you don't hear much about um, on these knives. Really great diamond texture. It's like the floor of a earth mover or something like that. Uh, you got a big fat wide pivot. And then, of course, the super strong shark lock. That is, you know, that's the star. That's why we're looking at this folder, uh, because it has that shark lock. Um, like, the, uh, like the triad lock that we were just looking at, also designed by Andrew Demko. The Shark Lock is designed to become stronger over time as the parts and pieces work into one another and wear into one another. Um, the, the spring in here pushes the lock ever forward into, into its uh, position, making it always more and more locked up. And then, of course, uh, you know, if you have your thumb on this delicious thumb ramp back here that's what this lock becomes an awesome thumb ramp really nicely jimped well that adds to the strength of the, the lock 
totally unnecessarily, but it just does. So the Demco 80, 20.5, and I, I would say by extension that the, the uh, I'm sorry, this is the 80, 20 MG. When I made my list for Jim, I, I just out of uh, reflex said 80, 20.5. Uh, so that is incorrect. This is actually the 80, 20 MG. MG means machine ground. So this was all done in the shop there, uh, the Demco shop, except the uh, the grinding of the blade, the bevel of the blade was ground by a machine. Beautiful, awesome, robust knife. I could just stare at it all day. All right. Uh, next up, this is one that a lot of people are likely to have. Uh, a lot of people out there who have served in our militaries, thank you for your service, um, have these knives because, because they've served. Uh, or some version of it. And that is, in this case, the USMC K-Bar. Um, this one I adore. I got this in 1991. My my brother gave it to me. And the cool thing about this one, it came in a really cool uh, box in it, and it had a fold-out. wish I still had this. It had a fold-out uh, set of plans for, um, you know, blueprints, basically, for this knife in the sheath um, for when they were pitching it to, uh, to the U.S. government when the government was was going to uh, change, uh, replace the M3 trench knife as their as their main fighting utility knife. Uh, the K-Bar, this one is uh, a re-release from that era, so it's got a fully sharpened swedge, which I love. Uh, but m nowadays they make them, they do not have the sharpened swedge, and it's not as uh, hawk build. This makes, I mean, a, an outstanding weapon when you turn it over. Well, it makes an outstanding weapon in any orientation, but that sharpened swedge in that radical hawk bill or that swooped hawk bill makes for a, a nasty weapon. Nowadays, uh, they make them with the with the swedge that is straight and unsharpened, and really, that's that's more because it's being used as a utility knife almost exclusively, uh, and so not as much of its weapon weaponiness uh, goes into it. Either way, you'd be in great stead if you were stranded with this or the other K-Bar. Actually, I'd prefer the modern K-Bar um, because it is a very stout and sturdy knife. It's proven. That's that's a, that's something that you cannot uh, put enough value on. It's been proven over time, you know, by soldiers in many wars and and those soldiers who have returned with those knives and used them for year after year after year for hunting and camping and fishing and all of that. Uh, there's one of those on the wall behind me that my brother got me uh, from the Korean War. It's the same thing. It's been, it was used during the war and then definitely after. And so these things have really proven themselves as uh, incredible knives. I've been looking to get uh, a new K-Bar just to have a modern represent representation of it. I think it's responsible as someone who calls himself a knife junkie uh, to do that. So I'm gonna do that. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, I'd like to get the case version. Case also did a, uh, they still make a prototype or a version of the prototype they did and that they submitted. Uh, and uh, it's a good looking knife. So that is the K-Bar. And uh, what a great knife that would be. A lot of people have them just hanging out in their trucks. So great, great knife for that. Okay, so this one is a little bit different. You're going out with all your tactical friends uh, for some beers and you want to impress them. Uh, with the knife you have in your pocket. Well, this one is impressive for a number of reasons. Um, and one of them is that it is super robust. So uh, if this were the the tool you had to rely on in a stranded in a stranding situation, you'd be in pretty good shape. And that is the Spartan Harzi folder. See what I mean? You're out, you're out with the friends you need to impress. So yeah, it's a it's a fancy, expensive folder. Uh, but so is the Demco. The Demco just looks less fancy because it's got G10 on it. Uh, but this is all shiny and titanium. Um, but man, so this knife uh, to me distills all of the best qualities of Hinderer and Chris Reeve knives uh, out into something uh, that is greater than the sum of both of those. I don't know. I, I, I think that this knife feels so incredibly sturdy. Uh, to me that that it I, of all of the hard use quote unquote hard use overbuilt knives that i have i think this one feels the stoutest it feels like uh in hand it it, it feels like a solid piece 
Uh, you have no weight relief in these thick titanium slabs. You have really nice uh, contouring, so it feels comfortable in hand. It's very ergonomic. Um, you have really good gription here with, with excellent wide cut jimping. That's kind of jimping I prefer. You have it down here too, which is important um, for, especially when, when opening, you want, you want a little bit of a uh, grip there, uh, but also just in, in all sorts of cutting to have jimping here is you can't, you can't have it enough. Also, it's great in reverse grip, uh, but this blade shape is very useful. It's four inches and it's stout. Now, this is one of those knives that I've wanted to have uh, reground hollow um, because it's a little not too slicey. But at the same time, that's one of the USPs of this knife is the fact that it's 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 not a sharpened pry bar, but it is a sharp and robust do all kind of hard use knife. So um, this would be a great one to have on you. Plus, we we're talking Loctite before. This lock, you reinforce with your grip. Uh, that That is one thing that I do like about the um, frame lock over the liner lock. With the frame lock, the mere act of holding the knife reinforces the lock. So, uh, yep, that's the Spartan Harzi folder. Next up, this is a really uh, great and inexpensive camp knife uh, that I got from the makers. This is BPS Knives father and son team in Ukraine. Uh, they sent this to me and I've been loving this thing. Uh, this is the HK five. It is, I believe 30 bucks, 30 bucks. Um, it is 1066, uh, high carbon steel. It's got a beautiful, uh, sort of clip point blade here and is sharp as the day is long. And this is a, um, Scandi edge that's been uh, stropped and just is so damn sharp. And then perfect ergonomics here on the handle. The, the ergonomics of this are outstanding. And the uh, you've got the four finger grooves and they fit my hand and they fit larger hands very well too, I know for a fact. Um, this is a 90 degree spine. You could definitely throw sparks off of there. And I love the blade shape, love the blade shape. But really, man, they got this thing so wickedly sharp uh, i have a lanyard on here that i originally put on just to help pull it out of the sheath because this gorgeous thick full grain leather sheath was tight when i first got it but it it uh it has taken on the shape of the blade nicely so this is actually not even necessary uh, but i'll leave it on there and also a dangler sheath that uh is really actually quite nice. It stays out of the way. It doesn't flop around too much. Um, but why why do I think this would be a great knife to get stranded with? Well, because it's it's no th no frills, no nonsense. It's got a super robust but extremely strong edge with that Scandi grind. Uh, it also has an aggressive profile. If you needed it as a weapon, uh, you'd be in you'd be in good shape with it. Um, and it's very, very comfortable. I feel like you could do a lot of work with this all day long. It is an unfinished handle, uh, and yet it is contoured and sanded and feels really nice in hand. So uh, a great knife to get stranded with is the BPS HK5. All right, so I was thinking about what about if I have some sort of a cool modern uh, Chinese fold or something, you know, in, in, the, in the realm of the affordable, but fancy Chinese cool construction. So this one just jumped out at me. It's the Max Ace Sandstorm. It is a big four and a half inch blade. You've got a an inch and a half high height uh, flat grind on a relatively um, modest blade stock. So it's very sharp and, and thin and slicey behind the edge, but you've got a big blade to be working with here. You've got a great point uh, and swedge here for for any sort of thrusting or defensive thing, caught, you know, reason you might need this in a stranding uh, situation. But you also have a very large um, blade. You have a very large, very broad blade and a nice big handle. It's a fat handle. It it's good contouring. Gives you a, a number of different uh, uh, places to grab on it. And uh, this is a, 
K110, so that's a D2 tool steel. And then it's got an annoying feature that in a stranding situation would be awesome. Uh, it's got the roto block. It's got this, uh, I don't know what they call it, what uh, Max Ace calls it, but you turn that lock there and you cannot close the, uh, the liner lock. So uh, it becomes a much more um, locked up knife. So it's nice and big, but it's the sort of thing I might have in my pocket on any given day. Uh, and this would be a great one to be stranded with due to the size and the, uh, the, the tough build of it. And then the additional lock. Okay, next up, I was looking at my tops knives and I do have a number of, of good ones. Uh, the Prather War Bowie would be cool um, to have on me. The, um, the, uh, Tex Creek would be a good one to have on me. Uh, but this one, uh, doesn't get enough attention and occurred to me, this would be a great one to have on. This is the wild pig hunter in a sumptuous, beautiful leather sheath. Uh, okay. So why the wild pig hunter? Well, I'll show you. First of all, it is full tang. It's a full tang quarter inch slab that has a, uh, has a distal taper, but not too extreme. It, it only starts to taper right here. Um, so it is stiff and rigid for hog hunting. And then in cross section, it has, it has this sort of I-beam structure uh, down the center. So it's got a raised ridge there. It's extremely rigid for thrusting. So this is the kind of knife you could uh, turn into a spear for hunting in a stranding situation. Um, but it also has a very sharp edge and a um, a grind that only goes halfway up, up the blade. So a saber grind that, and differentially heat treated, you can see right there. So a very good uh, cutting edge. And uh, you could do a lot of work with that edge and not worry about it chipping out or anything like that because it's 1095 steel. We all know 1095 is great and tough, but it, it, it does have a sort of wedge-like geometry. And yet remains very, very, very sharp. So you could use it uh, for a lot of finer uh, cutting tasks and yet still have uh, the meat behind the edge uh, to, to really uh, go to town with this and not be too concerned that being stranded, you're gonna lose your, your, only, your only knife. And it's nice and pointed and yet very stout all the way up near to the point. Uh, of course, you got micarta, the, this awesome material is just great when it's dry, wet, no matter what, and then the grooves they put in there uh, make it excellent. And not for nothing, if you needed to fend off a wild pig, this is the knife. All right, I'm going to put it back in this sheath. This also comes in an all-black version uh, that comes uh, with a black uh, Kydex sheath. And I believe the original, uh, it's its uh, a uh, Russian knife, a Kizlyar, and I think, uh, I think the Russian military uses a knife that looks a lot like that. <clears throat> Next up, in folders, uh, I was thinking about flippers. What what flipper would I want to get stranded with? I know, sounds funny, but some days that's how I pick my knives. I want a flipper. Uh, so it would be this one. I, I thought immediately of off-grid knives and uh, because they do make the most robust flippers uh, that I have in my... I've used robust like a hundred times. I do apologize. They make the stoutest uh, folders in my collection that are flippers. And this one, I think it's chief, chief among them for stout feeling. 154 cm, you've got a high height uh, saber grind. And as all off-grid knives, the Rhino is very, this is a Rhino V2, by the way. The Rhino is very thin behind the edge and very sharp. That's one thing I always talk about with off-grid knives is how thin they are and what a dream they are to use uh, with, um, say, cardboard and that kind of thing. Uh, but other tasks, no doubt. It is just has a very sturdy feel. Uh, light skeletonization in there, but very, very sturdy uh, with the liners and the G10. And then uh, I'm going to put this up to the mic. Listen to the flipping. I mean, it just has a um, all business sound. And that sound is uh, really, really great lockup. Made by Best Tech, designed by Off Grid Knives. Great ergonomics, could use this all day long. Does have a center line point, so, you know, could be uh, useful as a uh, combative instrument, but really this would just make a great uh, utility folder flipper 
to get stranded with. All right, last in the list. I, I couldn't do this list without saying, well, there is a chance I could be driving around and have this with me. Uh, this is my most proven knife outside doing everything, and that is the Trailmaster Bowie by Cold Steel. And this is old school. It's got the leather sheath. Wish Cold Steel would go back to leather. They did some really good leather stuff. Uh, like the Natchez, man. It's a shame they don't make the Natchez and the Laredo uh, Bowie with leather anymore. But anyway, this is an incredible do-all knife. You've seen me talk about this many times. Uh, I think that's 5 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, it seems like it is, but it probably just a quarter inch uh, with the distal taper. Uh, zero ground swedge, so it will uh, it will chew up your uh, baton a little bit. But I, this is what I use to make um, kindling, and this is what I baton with. I absolutely love it. It is wedge-like in uh, cross-section, but it's got a high uh, edge bevel, so it is wickedly sharp. I recently took this to my uh, grinder and got a really nice edge on it because I've had this for probably hmm, going on, I don't know, over 25 years and uh, never, you know, I sharpened it a little bit here and there, but never put a new edge on it. So I recently did that. Love the patina here. This handle is held up. Uh, this craton after so many years doesn't have that nasty coming apart, melty feeling uh, that that old rubber has. And uh, this thing is just great. If, if you have uh, a decent amount of money to spend on just one Bowie knife ever, or even one fixed blade ever, I cannot recommend the Cold Steel Trailmaster enough. This is such a great knife in all of its uh, iterations and makes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me in this, uh, in this quest to find the 10 best knives to get stranded with. These are incidental things. This is not um, going out uh, packing for disaster. This is uh, something I have in my car uh, when, when it all goes down. Um, I also incidentally have a um, Recon Tonto. No, no, no. What is it? The GI Tonto in my car, a very inexpensive cold steel that is and would be great in the situations I outlined here. Plus, if you lose it, it's no great loss. All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to tune in uh, Sunday for a great interview show. And uh, of course, tomorrow night, Thursday Night Knives. And uh, coming up this weekend, don't forget, on Friday, it is Knives Live going into Saturday. And we have the 3 p.m. Saturday slot. So be sure to join us there. Uh, also, be sure to join us at Patreon. Just uh, scan the QR code right on the screen or go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.